Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to look at Newfoundland Folklore Edition from Graham Blair. On March 15th, 2011, a crew of storytellers descended upon the Ship Pub in St. John's, Newfoundland. Their goal? A marathon performance of Jack Tales. The performers worked to piece together their own folk epic in the form of the stories that have become such a big part of Newfoundland's culture. The six hour long group performance lasted well into the next morning as they spun their tales to a packed house all night long. They called their event the Jack Cycle and it ended up as a fascinating tribute to the tradition of Jack tales that have been told for generations all around Newfoundland. All of the stories, the Jack tales, center around the good-natured Jack, the hero of countless adventures where he uses his courage, cleverness, honesty, and wit to conquer all of his foes. And it's that legacy of Jack tales that inspired the Newfoundland folklore deck from Graham Blair, a Canadian woodcut artist with a passion for sharing the culture of his home. I'm always excited to dive into mythologies and stories, and for me, Jack Tales really represented a charming and new foray into some of those worlds. So let's see how the deck turned out. All right, so starting with the tuck box, it's a really simple design. The pattern that you see here is derived from the partridge berry plant. It's a species native to North America. It's a simple, but to me, really effective pattern. I love those sort of reddish earth tones that show up on both the front and the back of the tuck, kind of that borderless design. No words on this one. Instead, uh, the words are here on the side. You get the name of the deck here, Newfoundland Deck of Cards, Folklore Edition. A couple more of the uh, partridge berries there on the side. And on the other side has your uh, ad copy. Weird that it's kind of on this side of the deck rather than on the bottom. So you can see uh, Graham Blair mentioned here. And then you get more ad copy on the bottom mentioning the USPCC who printed the deck. And then the top here, you get the name of the deck once again, this time in French. Uh, so in Canada, you have to put everything in both French and English, kind of the dual language there. Uh, as you can see the French there on the top. Uh, and then it's finished out with the uh, black and white USPCC seal. Uh, I kind of wish that would have been left off. I don't love the standard seal there. Uh, and the fact that it's the US playing card company for a deck inspired by Canadian folklore, I think that's a little bit distracting. So could have done without the uh, tuck seal there. But as you open up the interflop here, mentions Graham Blair, his website. If you want to see more of his woodcut work uh, or pick up a deck of the cards, that's where you can go for that. Uh, and then nothing printed on the interior of the tuck. So, uh, simple tuck box, but the cards are always where it's at. So let's get to them. We'll start with the back design. So same partridge berry inspired back design that we saw on the tuck box. In fact, the exact same pattern there, uh, but really nicely done. And I love that it's a borderless back design. So that uh, borderless design always works fantastic in fans. Uh, so simple look to it uh, and you can definitely see the inspiration of the woodcut style in this one so with woodcut they'll take a block of wood and carve the design into it apply the ink to the block of wood and then press it onto paper uh, and so you can really kind of see that style maintained here with that borderless back design really nice and then onto the faces of the cards and we get a pair of jokers in this one and of course it's a deck inspired by jack tales so who other for our first joker than jack himself the hero of all of those different tales now the stories in this one no specific story being told jack instead is used in basically you know hundreds or even thousands of different fairy tales and stories so you can see jack represented here in that one-way style very fun almost kind of a crude style of art on this one very fitting for the folk art style and you can see him here with some of the different implements that he might have used in the story uh, things like his sword or a magic apple even a few playing cards that he might have used to play some tricks along the way love the look of this one the little pops of color the greens and the reds work really well and then for every story good guy there's got to be a bad guy so the second joker features none other than the devil this one uh disguised as a portuguese fisherman uh kind of a fun look you can see the devious look in his eyes there and he's got a few uh playing cards of his own as well so fun look of these i love the art style on these just kind of a different distinct look and I like the addition of the sort of background look here, the uh, background imagery with the falling snow around, uh, just kind of a nice extra touch to the cards. So there's your two jokers. You also get a couple of ad cards that tell you just a little bit more about the uh, story of the deck, one in English, one in French. So you get the dual language there as well. And then that uh, story kind of continues on both sides of the card. 
So always nice to get a couple little story cards in there for a story based deck. Uh, and then on to the main deck. Start off with the only power ace in the deck, the Ace of Spades. Uh, features a very simple design. No words on this one, which I appreciate. Just has that enlarged spade pip. Again, making use of that partridge berry design, this time just in black and gray within that uh, large pip, and then outlined with that white border. Fun, clean look to it. Nothing too out of the ordinary. You do get more partridge berries there as the uh, background watermark. And then a slightly custom pip and index there in the corner, but done in that classic black or at least a dark gray. Uh, number cards also feature those slightly customized pips. And each one of the suits is going to have a background that kind of calls to mind some of the scenes or nature that you might find around Newfoundland. So this one uh, just has the clouds that you might find in the sky. Nothing too special on that. And then as you get to the uh, diamonds, we celebrate the waves in the water. This is probably my favorite of the backgrounds. I love those curling waves and the splashes of water. Of course, uh, fishing very big in Newfoundland and other Canadian communities. And so the water would play a large part in their lives. And then you move on to the clubs with the swirling leaves there, almost like a wreath, but calls to mind the forest that you'd find all around the, uh, the countryside. And then finally for the uh, hearts, we have the mountains and the trees that would dot the landscape. And the, uh, again, the uh, slightly custom look. I love the, uh, you know, just a little bit imperfect look to the shape of the pips there. Uh, you know, not quite crisp and clean. Again, kind of calling to mind that woodcut technique that may have been used to create the artwork. So there are your number cards. And then we get to the courts. And the courts are going to be a celebration of some of the many characters, animals, and uh, magical creatures that you might find as part of the Jacktails. All of them done in this one-way style and in the same art style that we saw on the Jokers. I think it's a great look to it. And despite the fact that the tones are fairly muted in earth tones, the greens, the reds, the oranges really still pop up and give these uh, some, some real life to them. But fun set of characters all the way through and definitely a very distinctive and unique set as you go through. Each one of the suits kind of goes into a different area of the stories, you know, so... Uh, the, so starting off with the spades, you'll see what I mean as we go through this, but the spades are some of the uh, folklore of the night. And we start off with the great horned owl as the jack of spades. Love the colors on this one. This is probably my favorite of all of the court cards, but of course the uh, owl, one of the great predators of the night. You can see him there with the, uh, the huge claws on the talons there. Next up as the queen of spades, this is the old hag. She was known for paralyzing her victims in fear and sitting on their chest as they sat there frozen in terror. A uh, very menacing look to her. Definitely not someone you'd want to encounter at night. And then next on the king of spades, this is what's called a haint. Uh, it was a spirit of a drowned fisherman and they would wander the night and uh, actually be helpful. So in their afterlife, they would help wayward fishermen unload their catch from the day. You can see him there with the lantern. Love the uh, seaweed that sort of caught all around him from his journey to the bottom of the ocean. So there's the hate as the king of spades. And then moving on to the diamonds, we go to the seas, uh, starting with a creature here on the jack of diamonds. This is a giant squid, another beautiful card. Squid always the, with the twisting tentacles, I think are great fodder for artwork. And this one is no exception. The greens there look really nice. And then on the Queen of Diamonds, this is a really almost disturbing creature. This is a shark inspired mermaid, uh, but definitely not like an aerial kind of mermaid. This one's definitely a lot more evil and menacing looking with the teeth there, that hair flared out. Uh, and you can even see the shark's tail instead of the classic fish tail. Uh, but a cool look to it nonetheless. And I love the narwhal spear here. So the narwhal horn kind of becoming the spear that the mermaid is we uh, wielding. And then on the King of Diamonds, no sea mythology would be complete without the story of a pirate king and his buried treasures. You can see this pirate marching off, his treasure slung over his shoulder, and his cutlass in his hand. Very cool one. All right, so now as we go to the clubs, we go to some of the folklore of the woods and one of the classic creatures of the woods. So all of the jacks are going to be different creatures. One of the most classic creatures of any forest is going to be the fox. Uh, this particular fox may be a fairy who's transformed into an animal or something like that. Uh, but I love the patchwork look of this one, the greens and the reds. 
Very cool look, almost as if the, uh, the coat's been stitched together. Uh, and then the queen and the king here both represent fairies that would appear in their culture. So the fairies in Newfoundland culture didn't have wings, but they were the sort of mischievous little characters you know, who would cause all kinds of trouble, whether it was stealing away abandoned children or unattended children. So you can see this one, the queen of clubs here marching off with a couple of children in her hands or just causing all sorts of general mayhem. So the king of clubs here with the slingshot in his hand and then I guess that's a raccoon on his back. So very fun look to those as well. And then we go to the hearts. Uh, and now we're gonna step into the home. So this is some of the more classic folklore stories that you would hear in any home. Uh, and we start off with a dragon. Now we think of dragons usually as being more European folklore, but they made an appearance in uh, Newfoundland as well as one of the many creatures that Jack would have to fight along the way. Uh, and so we get a depiction of a, a dragon on the Jack of Hearts. Uh, the Queen of Hearts here, a look at uh, one of the many witches that you might find all around. This one with a crow in her hands or a magical sword. And of course, the uh, warts and the classic hooked nose there as well. And then the King of Hearts, another one of the classics, the giant. This one, a two-headed giant, captured the princess there. So he's got the, uh, the tiny princess there in the hands and then those uh, mangled teeth as he sort of grimaces at her uh, in his hand there. So very cool look, another fun card. I really like that King of Hearts. And that is the deck. A really fun look overall, a fun dive into all sorts of different mythology and just a really creative take overall. I love the artwork on this one. You know, don't let that really simple tuck box fool you. I think this is a really fun deck. Now, as far as the uh, cards themselves, these are printed by USBCC, done on a crushed stock. So they're going to handle really nicely. Of course, that borderless back design is going to look fantastic if you use this in fans. Uh, and just nice, smooth handling all around. Uh, really great deck. One that I think is worth checking out for anybody. Uh, this was just a recent discovery for me and really glad I picked it up. Now, like I said, uh, if you want to check out Graham Blair's site, he does have these as well as his first deck, the other Newfoundland deck, uh, available for sale on a site and can't recommend it enough. So I'll put a link down in the description if you want to pick those up for yourself. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews, more unboxings, and let me know what other decks you want to see in the future. That's it for now, and I'll see you for the next one.